Welcome back. The latest coronavirus relief bill includes about $650 million for the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Some of that money will go toward helping the federal government re recover from major cyber breaches. Ari Schwartz is Managing Director of Cybersecurity Services at Venable. He's former Special Assistant to the President and Senior Director for Cybersecurity. Ari, welcome back. It's great to see you. What does CISA do with $650 million? I'm not suggesting that they don't deserve it or that it won't be well spent, but where, would you, where do you expect to see that money go? Well, I think what we saw in the last uh, last year and in the last administration was a uh, effort to look at each individual state when when we had this ramp up of looking at the election uh, process and the, the security around the election, and they went very methodically state by state. In a lot of efforts that they have going forward, they're not going to have that kind of time. And they know that they have to ramp up the flyaway teams that they have, have to have more than one or two uh, operations in the field at, the time, at a time to go look at our critical infrastructure and make improvements, uh, do reviews, et cetera. So I think some of that money will go to that effort. Um, and then they're also looking at kind of the new technologies. One of the things we saw was that uh, the efforts that they'd had to kind of come up with government-wide protections were behind the times um, and in when we through this in, in the question of the solar winds attack and the half dam attack that we saw um, that that where uh, the the agencies didn't have the protections in place and DHS wasn't able to protect them fully uh, as well. So looking at new technologies to help to do that uh, uh, as well, I think is uh, there. Are, two of the areas. It's not everything, but I think that that's, those are the ones that I'm looking at most closely. Is there a potential here for this to be a, a kind of a turning point for CISA? There are a lot of folks that have said over the years that CISA should really be the cybersecurity leader for the federal government and, and the cybersecurity operations across government are more dispersed than maybe they should be. Is this an opportunity to kind of harden that in some way? I think it is in some ways. I mean, for some, in some ways, it will, that that won't be the case because agencies aren't going to look to CISA um, to CISA um, uh, in terms of uh, they that they must respond to everything CISA says to do without OMB being behind it, without the National Security Council being behind it, without uh, you know that kind of backing. Um, so it's similar, but but they do have the ability to demonstrate greater. Uh, um, competency, and they've started to do that quite a bit. I think we've seen that in the last few years where they do, do demonstrate that greater competency, and then agencies want to work with them. And I think that that is uh, a difference that we are already seeing, and we will see more of if they have uh, greater funds and greater ability to work with agencies and give them tools to protect themselves that the agencies want, um, as well as the backing from OMB that gives them that kind of credibility too. When you list all those organizations, Ari, it, it makes me recall the conversations that we've had over time about one person coordinating all those cyber efforts, national cyber director, national cyber coordinator, and so on. Still don't have a name for that yet, but is that is that concept maybe the what's going to bring all of those disparate pieces together that you just described? To me, I think that's exactly what the national cyber director should do. We've heard, we've seen in lawfare, uh, actually there's this kind of ongoing debate now, what should be the national cyber director do uh, and what the vision for them should be. Uh, what you laid out is exactly what I think that that vision should be, that, that the national uh, cyber director should uh, be able to bring together all of these pieces, work with um, the National Security Council, work with OMB, work with NIST, work with CISA, um, and build up the ability to uh, coordinate together and uh, work together as a team, and then uh, bring in the other agencies when they're uh, not doing the things that they should do. Uh, the National Cyber Director will uh, will be based in the White House. We're expecting a, a cybersecurity executive order from the White House in the coming days, weeks. What do you expect to see in that, Ari? Um, I expect that uh, we will see uh, a range of um, efforts specifically aimed at uh, fighting the adversaries like China and Russia that we've seen at, um, come after the U.S. I think we'll especially see a lot of discussion about China, um, and that's some of that's diplomacy. Some of that is uh, work on uh, the efforts um, around the intelligence matters, et cetera. But in in the the main part that I've been focused on is the defensive side, 
Um, and that includes things like software assurance um, that we'll see uh, a, a and supply chain efforts where we'll start to see some uh, new protections put in place to help to make sure that the software that comes into our supply chain in the U.S. government and beyond is uh, is has gone through the test and that we have some kinds of protections in place that, that uh, really look at the, the broader holistic efforts and not just kind of the, the front of what has come in. About 30 seconds left, Ari. Do you think that executive order will be a response to SolarWinds and Microsoft Exchange, or will there be more to it than that? Um, I think it'll be a little bit more than that, but I think there will be a lot that's directly on that point. Uh, we'll see a lot more because I, I think the bigger picture question from the, that we see from both of those is um, uh, that we weren't we're too still too busy protecting the border and we're not doing enough no, knowing that the bad guys can get in that there are going to be zero days there are going to be uh, um, exploits that can come in uh, that haven't been patched etc. Um, so what are we doing? Um, uh, you, you know, what are we doing to make sure that we have kind of the endpoint detection uh, in, in there in able to protect us? What are we doing in able to make sure that uh, um, we, we know the behaviors that are going on in the network itself behind the firewalls? Ari Schwartz, thanks very much. As always, great to see you. Thank you. Good to see you.